So fellas, we out here working harder than Ugly Stripper at the end of the month. We got the uh, trooper car out of the garage and into the front yard under the other carport. I got the night from in front of the garage that's in the backyard. Try, tried to get it turned around so I could have the the uh, you know the front end facing the garage, but my little mower can't move it on the grass. So uh, I'll have to borrow my neighbor's mower, get them both hooked up to it. And uh, got the 347 right there. Starting to get that ready. Uh, got to take and swap the cam out of it and then uh, clean it up and put it, the oil pan back on it the, from the red car and then swap that into the red car. That was the whole reason to getting this stuff out of the garage now that I've got in there. You know, the, the trooper car and this just to get the red car get the engine swapped start so I can start driving that uh, get some miles on the clutch and stuff so it can go to the track and race it see see how it does against Keith's car so uh, let me get you spun around here what I was doing this is the intake manifold rod and he had on uh, the silver car from uh, a couple weeks ago he said it kept on sucking the uh, filter in or the uh, filter god dang the uh, gasket down here. Well, you can see how high it is across here. And on the back, it's fine. It sits on here. And then as you go up towards the front again, it gets a little higher. So what I figured out was that, and even it won't slide all the way forward. So what's going on is when I put this, I had this uh, splash shield put on left a little nub right there on both of them that I didn't catch so that's on me I didn't flatten them out I normally trim them down a little bit so it'll sit flush but I didn't uh, miss that last time miss that one step so that's on me so I'm gonna get those ground down and get this back to rod I've got the upper broke a ear off of it so I got that ready to take down to my welder buddy and sort of an update on other stuff this is the intake for the 347 and uh, <laughs> this is a cam for the pickup though that what I said I wouldn't do I did what I I ended up getting an offer on the uh, speed density cam and I thought well if I sell that, it's going to take some of the sting of having to buy this thing. So this is what it is. Not that anybody will ever replicate it. These are the lobe numbers from Comp. It's 254, 266 advertised, 204, 214, 111 lobe separation. It's on a 100 intake, 108 intake center line. I've got 1.65 pedestal mount rockers for the intake, so it'll be. I think it's like 570 or something like that 580 lift on the intake and then that'll be the exhaust 550 very mild small cam I needed it to pull around 18 inches of vacuum and that's about where it should be because uh, I've got the files to do a tune on it but uh, some of the settings in there have got me kind of scratching my head so I'm not 100% convinced it'll work that's why I wanted to make sure I had a mild cam uh, it, you know it's gonna have the ported Explorer heads and the uh, Explorer intake at least I'll have an Explorer lower I'm still still kind of uh, figuring out what to do with the uh, with the upper I wanted to do one something like it would I guess it would look something like the uh, what's that the Hogan intake only with the throttle bodies up on the top so it would go the air would go straight through the throttle bodies into the tubes you know like the uh, Hogan has and then uh, right into the lower the only issue is because of the throttle bodies would be up on the top would be getting some kind of uh, would be one having enough clearance to make the top runners long enough 
and have room before the hood. But I think it, because it have that straight shot, it wouldn't need to go through all the turns that it would like a typical Explorer upper. It would would not be affected so much by the runner length, I think. But I'm not 100% on that. So uh, for now, I can go ahead and just run the, the standard upper. And uh, once I get everything in the truck, then I can go from there, you know, see how much room I've got and that I can tune it and that uh continue to mess with these uh, dual throttle bodies to make sure they'll work. And then uh, once I get to that point, then I can spend the money for the tubing and the welding and all that stuff. But right now I kind of got to lay low so to speak not spend uh money because this cam and some other things i got for it are sort of were not planned but i got them anyway so it's just all in the purpose or the point of you know if i'm gonna have it apart i'm gonna do it right so that's the way i want to go plus like i said i found the more i took it apart the more i found stuff that needed to be fixed you know like the blower motor and then the doors inside the uh ac box where the mice had got in there and chewed a hole through the door and stuff, so I'm either going to have to go through the junk air, try to find one, or else uh, repair the one that's in there. So, uh, that's it. Uh, basically, I'm just, like I said, I'm working on the 347. Got the stuff out of the garage, making progress on that, so uh wanted to share. I think it had been a couple weeks since I made a video, so I thought I'd let you know I was still kicking. Just been uh, busy week before last I had uh, <laughs> I was I guess the nurses were impressed but I had strep throat and pneumonia at the same time and they were like how the hell did you do that and it's like I don't know I don't hardly ever get sick but once I do I guess I make up for it so I uh, went through that that was two days vacation burned up that I didn't get anything done but take naps and then uh, kind of on the downhill side of that so I started feeling better. I went to the track with Rodney and uh, Pirate just up there to spectate and get some parts. Rodney gave me a set of 24-pound uh, injectors from the drag van. Thanks again, dude. And then, uh, oh, and he gave me the uh, adjustable fuel pressure regulator, too. And then, like I said, I picked up that intake. Uh, I tried to help... Uh, the uh, silver car because it was running funny and uh stuff I was doing wasn't wasn't making sense how it was running so I was like I'll just put everything back to stock because it even when it was stock it seemed to run okay it wasn't Rodney's like it runs okay and I said yeah but you're okay and my okay are two different things so uh he ran it without the without the uh tune in it he got him home and then I put on the other chip I had put a stock tune and all I did was change the uh, RPM limiter and then put the change the stock or the uh, wide open throttle spark I think and a little bit of the fuel and uh, he said it ran like I said he said it ran good on the way home I told him to try that other chip then and he said that was good so when he first got it together and he wanted a chip in there I said has that mass air meter been cleaned he says yes yeah, practically new I said okay well I got to thinking afterwards when he he told me earlier in the week what had gone on with it since his last video that when uh when you get these new uh especially uh the K&N filters when you get them brand new they're saturated you know they're just like layered on uh, or somebody else will put the will clean the will clean the uh, filter and they'll just layer the oil on i'm guilty of doing that too i had done that with mine on my 88 gt but luckily that was speed density so it didn't hurt nothing but it, it's uh, the the two wires in there get layered with oil and uh it messes up the computer of course i know you don't have that trouble with carburetors but you know, he, he got other issues with them, like what Kyle had the other day. Um, so he's got it. He had another mass air meter put on. He said it seems to run better. So we're not done with that yet. We still got some more things to do. 
and uh, to get it to run right, right at what it should. And uh, Pirate, he had taken, I think it was a 75 or 70 millimeter mass air meter off, and he put, I had borrowed him my 80 to put on the Ghost, but then he said he didn't want to put a hole in it for the uh, nozzle. I said, like, oh, I appreciate that. And then he put it on there, and then after that, the car started surging. I had idle. And I said, well, I said, are you sure it was, didn't have a vacuum leak? And he said, well, I don't think so. I tightened all the gaskets. I said, but if there's a crack in that gasket, it'll show up. So he, he was giving me a hard time about that. I said, well, <laughs> you've only changed one thing, and it started running different after. I said, it's got to be, it's got to be that. So he's, uh, I think he's going to try that when he gets back home, to put a couple gaskets on it, see if it works better for him. I don't know that it made any difference for him at wide open throttle. He's got just the the ported E7s. They flow pretty good on the flow bench at uh uh oh, it. I can't think of his name now. Over to uh Mobile. But uh I guess that's it. Just a lot of blah 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 here. Just uh like I said, giving an update and there's the night night and all its glory. <laughs> I can't I can't push it in the yard. It's pretty sad. So anyway, just that was it. Just to give you guys a heads up what's going on and where we're at. And uh, hope to, by next weekend, be putting the 347 in the red car. We'll stand by. We'll show you that next time. All right. Appreciate y'all later. All right, fellas. So what I did, <clears throat> I realized after I got the first half of this thing, or part of this thing is I didn't mention what I wanted to mention about the intake manifold and the hock. So, uh, one of the guys that works in the building next to us bought one of them Ford 427 Windsor 460 horse engines. And they said, when you put the intake on with no gaskets, you should have uh, 40 thousandths at least here. See that gap around here with, on the China rail? And uh, when I first put this on, it wasn't sitting down flush, so I wasn't getting there. So I buzzed off them, uh, well, trimmed them down, them, them spot welds that held the baffle on. You can see right there. So now it sits down better. You can move it back and forth. It ain't hitting like it was. And it sits pretty flush on here. There's a couple of spots on the intake. I put Dicom on there and used the sanding block, big sandy block. It's like right here, there's a little bit of a spot. And there, that's where the welding was done. Up on the top, I had a lot of welding done on this thing because it's truck. It's a truck uh, lower and yes, the port job kind of kind of sucks. I didn't want to finish it off because I was just reluctant. I did taking this to the welder so many times I didn't want to uh, burn another hole through it so yeah lots of welds uh, but I was just trying to do it right I didn't want to use JB weld and this side's not horrible just a little spot oops up here there but that could be resolved with just a little thin skin of uh, uh, what you call it, RTV and I think it'd be fine the other thing and I pulled the front cover off this part of the gasket broke which is pretty common um, because I am taking the oil pan off and I'm putting the drag pan from the red car on here this isn't a big deal but just a little pointer I did it on Kevin's car and one other one. Uh, oh, the uh, Vincent's car, the silver uh, 94 GT. You put the put the cover on, get sure to have your guide pins in here already. Get it kind of lined up and then push in while you're tapping down on the top with a uh, dead blow hammer and push it in. It'll go on. Make sure you just get a little dab of uh, RTV on these two corners, like in the 
right in there. And that booger will go on. It'll go right, it'll, you know, if you're pushing in and tapping down with a dead blow, like on the top or like right here, you know, to catch it, to kind of force it down a little bit, it'll go on. Because those, uh, with the front cover gasket instructions tell you is to cut this off, cut that off and put them little cork things or that little flimsy thing in here. Those are horrible. I don't like them. Uh, so that's what I do. Try it if you want, up to you. Um, and also, if you got all the stuff, you know, your stuff's in good shape, they sell this gasket on Rock Auto, and you probably get it at O'Reilly's too, it's like two bucks. So you don't need to go buy the whole 20 some dollar kit if you don't need it. Just a suggestion. Use your money as you wish. That's all. I'm uh, going to take... I got the pan drained. Of course, these link bar lifters won't come out with the heads on, and I do not want to take the heads off. So, like I said, I got the pan drain. I'm going to flip, rotate the engine 180, so all the lifters ought to fall to the top, and that should let me get the uh, cam out, get the other one in, without having to uh, take the heads off. We will see. If not, I'll figure out a, something, some way to... Uh, run a piece of wire over there to hold it up or something that's it i'm gonna wrap this up and get her posted up on the youtubes appreciate y'all later